Because without Jesus Christ, all of our righteousness is what? As a filthy bread. Is what? As a filthy bread. I don't care how, how good of people we are. There's some really cool, good people out here. They're nice. That's why a lot of people, even, even I've heard some Christians say, do you honestly, I've heard Christians say it just like this. Do you honestly believe that, that Jesus is the only way to heaven? You honestly believe that? Come on now, it's got to be a number. What about those people that never knew him? What about that? Listen, God knows, and I asked God about that many years. God had to finally he answered me back. I asked him many years. And finally he answered me. And he said, I am a just God. I know the hearts of man. In other words, God knows just how to, how to judge every human being who has not, who never got a chance to know him. He knows their hearts. He knows what they would have known him. And he knows if they would have rejected him. And all of those that would have received him, he's going to receive them. And all of those that would have rejected him, he's going to reject them. So he got that all under control. But I'm going to tell you what, if you hear about him and you reject him, and you know you had the opportunity to get them, that's going to be on the individual that done that. It's going to be on them. And so I've heard Christians say, do you really believe that that's the only way? That is the only way. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, I don't believe that no more. I don't believe that no more. Well, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. But I'm going to tell you this. You better hope that you really say, I hope you really say, because if, if you doubt me, the word of God. And that's what we're talking about, them false teachers. Because I see you, Reverend. Them false teachers, that's how people get that stuff in their head. Because some, they heard some false teacher that put that bad seed in their mind that made them believe that, that uh, God will accept everybody just any kind of way, regardless whether they accept them or not. There's no such thing as hell. All that's just propaganda stuff to keep control over people. And that's all it is. Don't believe that nonsense. Yes, sir. No, you were saying how God um, judges the, the heart mm -hmm. in me. And, I, and it led me to um, Hebrews 4.12. And when you look yeah. at it, it says, For the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the design, dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, and the discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. So he makes it, it's just, it all the way down to the very. <laughs> nothing that he gonna miss. Can't miss. Even they, gonna like miss. you said, even with the intense. Mm. Nothing he gonna miss. And that's deep. And like I said, because, I, and like I said, I've really had this conversation with God a long time. It took for years for him to answer me. And he got, the way he answered me was like, I'm frustrated with you. That's how he asked me, like, I'm frustrated with you. You know, because I was like, at, at different times, I was like, no, I don't understand. I don't understand how people that never heard about you going to go to hell. I understand that. And I understand. I don't, I don't get it. And, and I heard people say, I'm talking to God. I hear people say, he judged people on that moral character they never heard about. I said, that don't set right with me. Because I know what your words are. And, and, I, and, and this went on for years. I know every bit of five, five six years. For real, this sparingly at different points asking God. And what he finally answered me. And he asked me just like I said, just like this. He said, I know the hearts of man. I am a just God. And when he spoke, I was all the lights went on. And I'm like, wow, no wonder you angry with me because it's right there in your word. You know the hearts of man. You discern the hearts of man. And I just didn't get it. But when he said it, I got it. And so I, I know, and I try to let everybody else know. When I teach people, talk to people, God knows the hearts of man. And when people tell me, and they out there just living all reckless and crazy, and the first thing they say, God knows my heart. But I tell them, I say, that's the scary part. He do know your heart. Then they get quiet and look at you. Because he do know our hearts. He know our hearts better than we know ourselves. Because a lot of times, we don't even know what's in our heart until we come under certain circumstances. And then we find out, oh, I didn't know that was in me. And I like to tell people this, that all 10 of those are 
in every one of us. We just not prone to do all of them, but it's in every one of us. All ten of them. Amen? Amen. 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 He says that I might know him and the power of what? His resurrection and the fellowship of what? His suffering being made what? Conformable unto his death. If by means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, Paul, you say, I suffer for Christ. I want to get the, I want to suffer for him. I want to know him. I want to know him better than I know anything else because I want to know him in such a way that this relationship that I have with him is so deep that I'm so, I'm, I'm right there next to him. I'm right there next to him. He says, he says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know in that type of power. In that type of power that I know that he got up from the grave and that I know that if I even speak to somebody that they can get up from the grave and I know that when I die, I'm going to get up from the grave too. Amen. Now Paul had such a faith. He had such a faith that I believe that if Paul would have said, God, bring fire down on I believe that God would have done it. But with that type of authority, authority comes much responsibility. And then that's why everybody don't have that type of authority because people would abuse that responsibility and authority. And just think about it. Just think about it. If, 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 if we had that type, of, that type of relationship with God that, that if we speak anything, anything, when some of us got some relationships with God, we say it, we know it's going to come to pass because God has spoken to us and we speak it out of our mouth, we know it's going to come to pass. But I'm talking about the type of relationship with God that God honor you just by doing it, just because you say it. Everybody can handle it. Just think about it. How many times have people made you mad and you're like, be gone? <laughs> can you imagine how many people would have been out of our lives off the face of the earth, even within our own family, they'd be gone. <laughs> even your own spouse, after they go, you'd be like, whoa. <laughs> Can you bring them back? <laughs> well, we ain't gonna be playing these games. We ain't gonna be up and down, up and down. We ain't gonna be doing that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna be asking for them to die and asking for them to resurrect. They can live. Then they come back to them. See what just happened? See what you just laughed? <laughs> So we, we, we would abuse that. So God don't give that type of authority to everyone. But Paul wanted that type of authority so that he could please Christ. And so he wanted to know him in every way. Now a lot of us want to know God's power. A lot of us don't mind knowing his resurrection. A lot of us don't mind being in fellowship with him. But don't nobody want that suffering. The suffering, he, he even wanted to know the sufferings being made conformable unto his death. I'm going to tell you this. I don't like suffering. I like to be honest. I like to tell the truth. I don't like suffering. I don't. I got high tolerance to pain. I really do. I can be hurting. My body can be hurting. Don't nobody know I'm hurt but me. I know I'm hurting. I know I, I done tore some stuff and sprained some stuff. I don't know what's up now. Told my Achilles, been up here in the pulpit while the preacher was preaching and was listening to the preachers, and I ain't gonna miss this message. But as soon as I finish, I'm going to the hospital. Because <laughs> my Achilles is turning me up. Turn me up. I did that work some years ago, teaching defensive tactics, turned around on the mat, sprained my ankle. They didn't even know it. I went the whole rest of that day teaching them, I gotta do this. I played little small steps. Gotta do that, you gotta do that. Yeah, come on. Take, I said, come here, let me show you this. Show them what I'm about to do. I let them go out for lunch. And by the time they came in, I was already back. So they didn't see me a lot of movement. Because I didn't want the students to know that I was injured. But after that day was over, 
The neighbor left. I got in my car and drove straight to Sinai. <laughs> the next day they came back with a rap leg and crutches. They like, you hurt yourself at home? I said, no, I actually hurt myself yesterday here. They said, I said, no, I didn't. So I have a high tolerance to pain, but I don't like suffering. Physical pain, mental, spiritual, emotional pain is a whole lot different. Physical pain, we can get past physical pain sometimes because we know that there are a lot of sedatives and things that can kill that pain. But this is mental, emotional pain while people try to take stuff to, to, to drown it out. Only thing that can really fix that is spiritual being Jesus Christ. Other than that, if all the psychologists, psychiatrists, counselors in the world can't can heal you of your emotional pain. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can teach you how to get there to heal. We can show you a pathway, but the one that can really do it is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. The, the worst hurt to me is for somebody to take your good intentions from bad. Yes. That's like a hurt that is like... Oh. It was all meant for good, and then they took it and twisted it all up on you. That can, that can really hurt. Because you all, you're constantly trying to prove why you, that, that you didn't mean it that way, and then after a while you're like, you know what, I can't, I can't make you, I can't make you. But the thing about it, it'd be fine if they would leave it with them. But no, they don't leave it with them. They go and tell everybody else. And then other people looking at you like you're crazy. And you're like, you don't even know what's going on. You don't even know what happened. And you're looking at me like I did something wrong. You don't even know what's going on. And then when you try to, if you try to explain yourself, don't nobody want to hear. Don't nobody want to hear. So you're like, all right, let me just, let me just suck this up. Suck this up. And a lot of us have been there. That's a beast. Yes. I got to hurt Amen. Amen. Not as though I had already attained, because he was he was like, no, look, I haven't gotten this thing yet. Mm -hmm. He said, but either where either were already perfect. He said, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Now I'm after him like he was after me. I'm after him like he came after me. I want to get everything that he has for me. I want to get it. I want to capture it. I want it. And that means including all, all what appears to be bad to man. I want that too. And I don't like it. But Paul said I want it. I don't ask for that. But Paul said I want it. Now how many of you, how many of you honestly have said, Lord, I want to suffer with you? If you don't want to shake your hand, and I thank God for the faith that you have, because yours is Paul's faith. That's Paul's faith. I, 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 don't, I don't mind all that other stuff, but I'm not asking him to suffer. However, when we get saved, what comes along with it? Suffer. And how you grow? Through what? Pain. You grow through pain. Naturally, you call it growing pains. You grow through pain. That's how you grow. You don't even know what God can do for you until you go through some hardship. You don't know. Yes, ma'am. No, or you're just praising God. Amen. Praising you don't know. You really don't know what God can do for you until you go through some hardship. But when you come out on the other side, your faith is increased, your rejoicing is increased, and you're like, wow. And you, when you get through to the other side, you're like, that really wasn't that hard as I thought it was. Once you do the other side. But while you're in it, that must feel hard. That must be some pain. You understand? I'm looking for this church to get through some pain. We're going through some financial pain. That's what we're going through. God knows I'm, I'll be glad when we get out of it. Because guess what? I won't feel that right now. We coming out of it. I'm telling you some real stuff now. I'm telling you what I know. We coming out of it. But while we're going through it, we suffer. But you know what God is doing through the process? Proving who's who. Good God. He's proving.
serving who's who? How many are working for the stuff? And how many are really working for me? Because if you're working for me, then you'll sacrifice you for me. Even as I sacrifice to me for you. Mm -hmm. Now when it comes to that, <clears throat> if, 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 if it comes to sacrifice, I sacrifice. I'll do it for Jesus Christ because there's some rejoicing. Mm -hmm. There's some fire that's going to come down that's going to exceed all the sacrifice. And we're going to praise God for all the sacrifices that we've done. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I had my piece here. I done put it down somewhere. That that <laughs> might, that might be I'll find it. Oh, here it is. That's all right. I just feel that moment. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because uh, Paul said, I, I haven't gotten all this yet. He said, I, I don't have it all. I don't have it all yet. He said, but guess what? I'm going after it. I'm going after it because I know that it's for the glory of God. And if anybody suffered out of all the disciples, out of all the apostles, all of us suffered. But Paul, he done more than all of them. And he was the one that came on the scene later. Mm -hmm. But he did more than all of them. Amen? Amen. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I've heard people say, and I don't know, maybe some of you, some of you are like this, but I'm just saying, I've heard people say, if I could just go back and do this all over again. I wish I was this age again so I could do things just a little bit different. I wish I could do things like I'm not like that. I'm not, but I know people that are like that. I hear people talk like that. If I go back to such and such, I would do such and such a little different. I would do such and such. I might have done things a little different, but I have no desire to go back. None. What was back there was back there. I got what I got from it. I learned what I learned from it. I suffered what I suffered from it. And I don't want to go back there no more. None. So you say, people say, well, I got regrets. Well, for it ain't no regret to me. I don't, I'm not glad about everything that I've done, but guess what? I'm glad I did what I did because I learned what I learned by doing what I did. Had I not done what I've done, I might not have learned what I learned. You understand? Amen. 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 Now, I don't want to go back there and do none of it all over again. Would I have done things different? Yes. But is my mind back there? No, you know what? Forgetting those things that what? Are behind and pressing forward. I'm trying to get to the Lord. That's what I'm trying to get to. What I did, what we done, the good and the bad. It's back there, can't go back there. A lot of people stay back there. Oh, I remember when we used to do this. Oh, we had such a hot, uh -huh. oh, oh, oh. Well, that's good. That was then. Let's get a high time in the future and stop worrying about the high time in the past. Because that's left behind. Amen? And that's what people need to do. This is what Paul saying. All that's left in. I'm pressing toward a prize. That's a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want everything that God has for me up there and here that he has for me because I'm pressing to win him. He's, he's what I'm going at. Once I, once I reach that, then I've, I've accomplished everything. I can leave here and take flight. Amen. Amen. Contrary as it seems, most human beings don't want to leave this body. I ain't trying to leave mine real soon. But when it's time to go, for real, for real, I'm, I'm up out of here. I don't want to hang around. I love my wife. I love my children. love my grand. I don't know if I'll have more than one at that time. I don't know. Might be tomorrow. I don't know. I'm not speaking it. I don't know. But if I was to go, love you, baby. <laughs> you 
got something to take. You got enough money from me, she wants she's like, oh, go over there, go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be enough to take care of you, you'd be all right. You pay the house off, and you'd be good. Amen. Amen. And guess what? I don't care who you bring in there after me either. Now, if it's the other way around, she's going she gonna to be, she be trying to come out of heaven. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get up and get out of here. <laughs> Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. And what is he talking about? Talk to him. After what we just finished discussing, those of us that begin to mature. First of all, that 15th verse then. Mm-hmm. You know. Amen. Uh, and, and basically, that's it. You know, that's just maturity, you know. Look, and that's look nice for, time. You know, look for the power of Christ, you know, and uh, grow in Christ. Amen. That's your maturity. Amen. It, you know, and should that act like you was when you was in the world. Or it, Amen. It should be different. Amen. There should be some differences in us once we come to Christ. Amen. And... And the thing about it is that what Paul was saying, this, this mindset that I had about, about uh, serving Christ and being with him and, and dying for him should be the mindset amongst us all. Don't get caught up in that flesh stuff. Don't get, it's a lot of people right now, right now, I know some, some mega churches, and I call them mega because of the amount of people that they had. They, they be packed. Most of the Sundays. But they got some stuff in them churches that's freely going on that is not of Christ. It's just free. It's just free. Don't nobody say nothing about it. The reason don't nobody say nothing about it, several reasons. One, you might be doing it as a pastor. So you don't want to say nothing about it because you're doing it too. Number two, you don't want to lose no membership because you got a lot of bills. Mega church, mega bills. Mega church, mega bills, which means if you don't have mega people, the church starts to close, then your mega personality for the, for, for people, your, 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 your uh, 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 celebrityism, if you will, is out the window. But I know some other preachers that you would think that they had mega churches. But their church is already dead. But they carry it as if they met it. But won't preach the to, to, won't preach the whole gospel just enough. Just enough. But won't preach the whole gospel because they're trying to win back what they lost. I don't want to be in no position. I want to be where Christ wants me to be. Period. Period. That's it. Because if you're where he wants you to be, you ain't got to worry about losing nothing. Only thing you have to do is worry about gain. Because your loss is what? Gain. And the truth of the matter is, if some of them would have done what they were supposed to do in the beginning, they wouldn't have the, the loss that they had. They wouldn't be trying to get back what they lost because sometimes you're not going to get back what you lost. It's done, knocked out, the bell is rang, the 10 count is gone. It ain't getting up. Keep trying, to, keep trying to resurrect something that God said is dead. But when you're walking with the Lord, when you're right there, we got the same mindset that whatever God wants us to do, let's do that. Whatever God wants us to say, let's say that. But everything is done in the spirit of love 
so that we can restore the ones that have jacked themselves up. Because it could be them, it could be us, it could be our family members. I got some jacked up family members. I do. Some of y'all do too. The reason I know because some of your family is my family. <laughs> teacher is not always going to be like the African said, dig a ditch and go in there. Sometimes they weave cotton and polyester together, and if you don't know the word, they'll have you so mixed so up. Lost. That's why it's so important. I remember I heard a good pastor from the mind was like, I, I don't mean, hey, if I, we're not having church, hey, go visit, but I really 
I mean, it's not like I'm trying to control the people, but if you're not versed in this word, you go out there and some pastor tickle your ear and you leave in the church.